As editor-in-chief of Package Design Magazine, I speak with some of the most brilliant thought leaders in the design, branding, and marketing of consumer packaged goods. Through the generous support of our sponsors, we bring these experiences to you. This video series explores what inspires these thought leaders and their insights on the collaborative design process as a strategic business competence. I'm Linda Casey, and this is Package Design Matters. got this beautiful skincare line it's natural skincare it's a market that's getting increasingly more crowded though so you really had to make your branding and your visual identity stand out from the competition you know this was a five-year conceptual evolution for me so actually when when I came to terms about what I wanted to launch as a mm -hmm. product line there were very few if not any Lux Wellness lines. Really? Yeah, very, very few. Since I've launched, you're seeing them pop up all over the place. Yes. So I've been, I've been out for about two and a half years and the, the process started close to about five years ago. So I, I started knowing what I wanted the product to be like, what kind of product I wanted. And I wanted a Lux Wellness product, which, which is what started the branding process for me. And I knew that it had to be Greek inspired because I'm first generation Greek. <laughs> so if you ever go to a Greek restaurant, they'll say, Yasu Linda, it always means to your health, Linda. And I thought, how cool is that really? And I decided, and it, it's spelled all different ways, usually Y-A-S-S-O-U, uh, Y-A-U-S-S-O-U. So I decided to just do Y-A-S-O-U and I specifically wanted to bold the YA so it's almost like helping you to pronounce it. Mm. So that was huge for me. So that's how the logo came about. I really looked at it first. I loved the meaning of what it really meant. And I thought it was so on target for what I was trying to accomplish and what I was wishing for people as well. And then I decided to approach the design almost like when you look at a word in a dictionary for pronunciation mm -hmm. because I knew that it would be a tricky word to pronounce. <laughs> so that's, that's where it really started from as far as my branding. And then my packaging, really I thought of Santorini a great deal. I don't know if you've ever been to Santorini, no. which is this like amazing, beautiful island that actually came ab about from volcanic... Uh, uh, explosions. So one island has red sea, red sand, black sand, and white sand, all because of the volcanic uh, eruptions that occurred and what the, the, the you know the mountains and happens with the chemical reaction from those volcanic explosions. So that's what creates like these different colored sands. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at my packaging, I wanted it to be like a matte black, like the black sand that I thought of in Santorini. Oh, perfect. And then I just wanted to incorporate the, uh, some sort of symbol that indicated Greek, and I thought of the Greek key, but I wanted it to feel more modern. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came about with the packaging and the whole start of my branding, and it all really started from the concept of what the product is. The consumer world was once static. We then came to understand the role of a brand. In turn, the world has changed. With the foundation of observations, insights, strategy, collaboration and extraordinary ideas, design serves as the conduit for a brand. Without design, 
What purposes do these efforts serve? And I love that because that in essence, you know, design and packaging, whether it's package design or design in anything, it's, it serves a purpose. And in this case, it serves the purpose of really conveying the identity, the roots, the heritage of the product itself and the heritage of your heritage because you are obviously the face behind Yasu and the creator and founder of it. And being Greek and having that, um, having that heritage tradition to fall upon was so important in the development of the product itself, wasn't it? Oh, it was huge for me. Um, because of my background, I have this knack for, for, for noticing like niche markets. <laughs> I mean, I just got, <laughs> take mental note and file it in the can, mental cabinet here. And, I, and, I will, and luckily, you know, I have a wonderful husband who listens, actually listens to me. And I would say, oh, God, I, there's such a huge, you know, market, I think, in recreating the Greek experience right now, you know, mm -hmm. because I think it's, especially what's, what's happened in Greece, which is tragic with the economy and politically speaking, but it's also a great opportunity because they're, they will come up like a phoenix, I have no doubt. And um, I think it's a great opportunity to recreate what that means mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And I think for Greek Americans here as well. I mean, because mm -hmm. it, it just transfers over. So I also would notice, you know, there's like niche markets and, in, in, you know, high-end uh, cosmetics. I mean, our high-end cosmetics back about five years ago did contain some good ingredients, but not very many, mm -hmm. you know, and then we had a lot of organics and natural products and they were contained great ingredients, but the application experience wasn't like the high-end experience. And I just kept thinking, well, why not? Like, mm -hmm. why can't, why can't we get a product that not only is filled with as much good stuff as possible, but also feels really great when you apply it, like the high-end products. Mm -hmm. So really it's just collecting all this information that I naturally do that nobody cares about. And I think it was kind of just combining everything. And also I was at a place in my life where I wanted to reconnect with my heritage. I had really distanced myself and I am so proud of my heritage. And um, I have an elderly mom who can't cook me Greek food anymore, <laughs> you know. So I really, really had this humongous urge and I somehow decided to put all these things together and uh, that's how I kind of came up with Yasu. <laughs> to be honest with you, I saw a need in the market for a Lux Wellness product and I wanted it to be Greek inspired. We live in a fast changing digital world. Dynamic communication and social expression influence just about everything we do. Business is digital. Impact is instant. Brands and customers interact in amazing new ways. From postage stamps to packaging and billboards, HP's Graphic Solutions business is leading these transformations, creating innovative digital print technologies that enable more effective, engaging communication between brands and end users. I was so blessed as a young child to actually live in Greece and experience old world culture. So my grandparents were mountain farmers and uh, my grandma made all her own, you know, health and beauty remedies and um, there was no hot water. Everything was like the best meats, the best vegetables, not that they ate meat very often, but mm -hmm. when they did, and they had a high respect and treated their animals really well, it was, an, it was like a celebration, even if it was like once every two weeks to eat meat, mm -hmm. you know, and it was really respected. So everything was influenced, all these things influenced me somehow in my life. So I was actually brought up with so many wonderful gifts Definitely. Yeah. It was it was so, in a way, because they had these traditional ways, they were so forward-thinking because now we look at simplifying our menus, simplifying our lives, and definitely looking more to nature for whatever we need, whether it's things that our skin consumes or that we consume um, through our mouths and eat. I know there's a huge movement happening right now. And it is, and we've grown to to become more educated in how we, you know, becoming more physically fit, and what we eat. And now we need to 
do so with what we put on our skin because it's because it consumes close to 60 to 80 percent into our body so it's not only what you're putting in but it's what you're putting on your body and um, I just believe that people are getting smarter so in some ways as we're progressing and it seems like we're so forward it's almost going back to mm -hmm. back to basics that maybe our great-great-grandparents knew mm -hmm. you know and and seeing how mass production maybe isn't as healthy for us and we need to slow down. Something is happening. The familiar barcode is touching everything. Every surface, every sound, every image. Imperceptible to you, yet it's clear to sensors like your smartphone. All things have become their own channels. This is the engine driving the Internet of Things. This is Digimark. Maybe rethinking what mass production is and how we, how we work with it. You know, one of your ingredients I think of a lot of uh, is olive oil. When a lot of beauty products start off with mineral oil being one of the first, pro you know, the first oh, ingredients. Boy, that's such a great example. And not only that, but most people who put olive oil in, it's just like food. I actually use certified organic extra virgin olive oil. So just like eating, olive oil, regular olive oil, as good as it is, does go through a synthetic process. Only extra virgin olive oil does not. That's the purest. But get, get but guess what? You get twice the benefits. How? Because it has higher hot olic acid in it. So it becomes a compound with other ingredients once it's used. It becomes different compounds. So you get a higher, twice the benefits, a higher dose of benefits from it because it hasn't gone through a synthetic process. So how do you teach your customers about you know, the benefits of these ingredients of your product. I, I, your packaging is beautiful. Your packaging does look a little minimal though. So it seems like you have the package design fits in some type of holistic marketing and branding campaign. Well, I guess it is, a, it is somewhat minimal because I, I think of clean living. Mm -hmm. So I want that to re be represented. I want it to feel approachable and not scary <laughs> because if you start reading my, you know, the ingredients, uh, it's, you know, it's intimidating, even good mm -hmm. ones. And sometimes certain ingredients sound like they're not good for you and they are, and certain mm -hmm. ones that sound good for you aren't. And um, I think the more approachable and, and the cleaner it is, it's not so scary maybe to have start trying to gear people to turn around and start reading those ingredients so it becomes more approachable. Mm -hmm. Definitely, know? definitely being able to kind of approach, uh, be able to not be so afraid of what's, what's going on in, in their products because they're actually understanding what they are and what they do. And I, I know that you do a lot of storytelling. You have your own blog. I do. I do have my own blog and I work with a great team of people and we try to come up with content that helps educate people like as you're saying in regard to ingredients and how to read your labels and maybe giving people a list of ingredients to start with to watch out for mm -hmm. and question and always trying to talk about how important mother-daughter relationships are and teaching our daughters what natural skin care really means. So that is a way that we are trying to educate, you know, people as well as doing inter you know, being invited to do interviews with you or whenever I have a chance to do events and talk about the product. So when you were leaping bunny certified, uh, you decided not to have it take up the majority of your front panel of your package package design. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I mean I know that the the use of iconography is greatly um, and certifications is greatly debated in our design community, and I'd love to hear your take on it as both an entrepreneur and designer. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I remember people getting certifications and wanting them to be humongously good, and that's great because they're so proud of them. But I think that people have to be careful and not ever take away from their messaging. And my logo is my message, which is to your health. So I am proud to be bunny certified. I 
have plant-derived ingredients that are, do not contain animal, other than my hydrating body cream, which contains beeswax and honey extracts. So a lot of hardcore vegans find that you know to be animal products. So I have to make note of that. But um, I think when you know, I think it's like old money and new money. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I, I I put it proudly on my package where it should be with all my information about what I am, but my, my message should always be the most powerful statement I feel on my packaging. And that's because, you know, I think that falls in line with the idea of being really careful with all your branding and marketing because you have this consistent message through everything that, in a sense, it's almost you would almost expect Yasu to be Leaping Bunny certified if you really knew the brand. No, oh, thanks, yeah. And we are. <laughs> so <laughs> we were, and then we became certified. So I, I think you, you're asking like a really great question. <clears throat> and I think where we forget sometimes as marketers or designers is that we always need to keep our message really clean and simple. Because sometimes people pick up on the learning certain ways. It could be visually. So if you had the Leaping Bunny or your certifications really huge on your package, people might get confused and just think of Leaping Bunny and not think of your product. You know? Completely, yes. Because subliminally it's doing something else. I think mm -hmm. the way we process things, and especially when we process things in today's time and age because we are bombarded with so much imagery and so much information with the internet that I think we have to be really careful in how we message. Did you have to change any of your package design so it would work better in online or were you able to keep it all the same? No, I've kept it all the same. It's working just fine for me online. Um, my packaging from the get-go, I was really blessed to work with great printers like American Litho who in turn brought me to packaging designers that I worked with. So the packaging has been designed from the get-go to be able to move into more higher uh, production levels mm -hmm. for thousands, to move from uh, a small boutique to a, a, a long run press, mm -hmm. per se, so that it could all be done that way as well. So it's from the start, because of my background, I think that I was smart enough to make those decisions so I wouldn't have to go through another repackaging down the road, mm -hmm, which I don't know how many, if I could give some advice to someone is try to seek some professional help when you're starting a line or starting to invest money in your packaging because packaging is designed a certain way so it's done on a press for bigger bulks, for bigger quantities. So should you grow all of a sudden, you're ready for that growth. Open for opportunity again. Yep. Definitely. Without having to redesign your whole product. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, I mean, things you just, you know, you have to make sure that the weight of that paper, that if you're using glass, can carry that without opening and falling apart. Mm -hmm. And also keeping your budgets for mailing opportunities. So there are certain things that you have to look out for when you're retailing online because then you're also dealing with postage, you know, for mailing, shipping costs. Let's talk a little bit about your product line. Did you always start with, uh, did you start with body care, facial care? What did you start with and how did you grow and extend your product, your product line? So, because, you know, if I was probably a smart marketer, I would have probably started with a, a product that was had a price point that was quite friendly, <laughs> you know, to introduce you to the product line. But because I started this, this, this per, the line is so personal to me. I created my body, my hydrating body cream was my first product with essential oils, and it was created because of what I remembered in my youth, the smells and you know, some, some of the things that my grandmother used in her products. So it was my inspirational product and my first product in creating the whole skincare line. So I'm really, really proud of it. And then um, after I created the hydrating body cream and had it exactly like I thought it should be, I uh, went through a transformation with the packaging actually. So I started out with a low profile jar. Mm -hmm. 
and um, it did cost a little bit more because it cost more to manufacture because of silk screening to the jar and the cap. And I realized that as easy as it was to scoop in, that I was worried that bacteria, you know, putting mm -hmm. your hand in and out. And so I decided to go into the pump for, for more health precaution reasons. But it also gave me an opportunity to not have to silk screen, and I was able to lower the price by, you know, 10%. The next products that I decided to work on was my skincare line. And so all my products are water-based because your body's water-based, and that's why they work on a cellular level. So they work on the inner layers of the skin as well as the outer layers of the skin. And then after the face creams, doing events, I had many, many people come up to me who actually were going through chemotherapy mm -hmm. and said, your, your hydrating body cream looks fantastic, but I can't use it because it has aroma. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? They said, yeah. So I was learning that patients who go through chemotherapy can't even tolerate fragrances at I didn't all, know that. but they can't even tolerate any kind of aroma, and they get very their skin gets very fragile and very dry during that mm -hmm. process. So I decided it's to to do an aroma free and not put any essential oils. And I've actually had people who have been using it and told me that it's like saved them. You know, it's been really helpful to them, and it was just as easy to take the essential oils out. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it didn't affect anything. And I can't tell you how that's been like the best, highest point for me so far. <laughs> that I've created something that, that could be really, really good for, I mean, not just for everyone, but for people that have a hard time finding good products when they're not feeling so good or mm -hmm. going through something like that. And I myself actually wonder sometimes if I created such a hydrating line because, you know, I have an autoimmune disease that I've been diagnosed with recently called Sjogren's Syndrome. Mm. And I've been told I've probably had it my whole life. And what it is, is um, the white light cells attack the saliva gland. So all that beautiful moisture in my mouth and my eyes gets depleted in my body. So mm. I wonder subconsciously creating, not only from my heritage, but from a personal standpoint, having something that's super hydrating because I was craving it became very important. You know, I didn't even realize all that, to be honest with you. You were driven on a cellular level to create. Yes. Yeah, there's so many things that came together, I think, for me in creating the skincare line that not until recently did I realize that aspect of it. And I say to myself, wow, I wonder if that had something to do with how hydrating the products are because they're all super hydrating. When brands exist that align with consumers um, ethos, what they believe in, that they're able to kind of relax and offload that onto someone else. They don't need to know the function of each essential oil. They need to know that Yasu cares about their health and that this brand will give products, using this brand will be products and, and ingredients that will be aligned with their own personal values. I agree. I hope so. I mean, I, 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 every, every product so far has been in alignment to what you're saying, you know, and has been created with a great deal of passion and a great deal of care and thought behind it um, in regard to wellness. <laughs> Thank you.